But thank you, Mr. Santini. Also, we'd like to thank Mr. Martin Glombatsky and the Kennedy Live team who put all this together also. Big thanks to them, along with Mrs. McGowan, who's really uh, shepherded the project. So thank you, Mrs. McGowan. Uh, we are here to listen to both sides of the issue. We are probably going to run into first period. So, boo-hoo. Uh, with that, we will be holding the bell for first period until the debate is done, okay? So all the teachers who are here, even if you teach first period, we will be holding all students until the debate is done, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll now turn it over to the debate team. Thank you, Father. Good morning, Kennedy Catholic, and welcome to this special presentation of Kennedy Live. Today, the Young Republicans Club and the Debate Club present a live debate between Dan Dudek as Donald Trump and Margaret Maisie Rogers in the role of Hillary Clinton. The format will be that moderators Anna Santini and Nick Goebelbacher will ask the candidates questions in seven different categories that each of the speakers will have one minute to answer. When the time is up, a buzzer will sound, ending each candidate's time. There will be as many questions as we have time for within the homeroom schedule. Students, yesterday you got an email with a link to a website called I Side With that allows you to see whose views best match your own. And on Monday, you will have a chance to vote for the candidate of your choice in the school-wide election after having evaluated your own views on that website. So, enjoy the debate. Do not forget to vote. Stay involved. And now to begin, Anna Santini will ask the first question. My plan consists of lowering taxes for the middle class to support struggling businesses and families. That is the only way to revitalize American commerce. We cannot rely on the globalist agenda, letting foreign interests take our jobs while America struggles. My three bracket tax plan will fairly divide the burden of taxes in a way that gives working class Americans opportunity to grow. I will make sure the rich, like me, pay our fair share, but not so much that it drives jobs to China or who knows where. Secretary Clinton's plan would cripple small businesses and force manufacturers out of the country. Look what she's done to New York in her time as senator. She promised 200,000 new jobs. Instead, we got a 25% loss in manufacturing and an overall stagnation in job growth. Clinton and the current establishment has abandoned the virtue of putting America first. I wish to change that. If we are to grow, we must put the American people first. We cannot surrender to a system that exploits American workers and drives jobs out of the country. We need to breathe new life into American businesses. That is my plan. Trump's tax plan, our national debt would rise 105% and include major tax breaks for the wealthy. He wants to give me a tax break I don't even need. We need tax breaks for struggling families who have to deal with medical expenses and college. I propose a series of tax cuts aimed towards the middle class. The upper class should have heavier taxes, which would mean both Donald and I would put money to our proposed plan. I'm a believer in significantly increasing taxes on short-term capital gains, but still keeping it under 
I will close corporate loopholes and make sure that millionaires and billionaires can't play lower than working class families. I am a, I am a presidential candidate and, that, and if a company like Nabisco outsources and ships jobs overseas, we'll make them give back tax rates they receive here in America, effectively keeping growing American jobs and allowing such change I propose to happen. As President of the United States, would you combat terrorism diplomatically or physically? So thank you. <laughs> of the United States of America is to keep us safe, which means maintaining a cutting edge military and standing up to our rivals. If elected, I will work with our allies to defeat ISIS, dismantle global terror networks, and launch intelligence searches to keep guns out of the hands of suspected terrorists in order to harden our at home defenses. The professionals who keep us safe would be the first to say we need better intelligence to discover and disrupt terrorist plots before they can be carried out. It is important that we stop the terrorists from getting the tools they need to carry out the attacks. And that is especially true when it comes to assault weapons like those used in Orlando and San Bernardino. We have to be concerned to bring both domestic resources, sharing our intelligence, take a hard look at Air Force security, for example, this is a time for America to lead, not to cower. And we will lead, and we will defeat terrorists that threaten the I said it before, and I will say it again. We need to destroy ISIS. They have attacked our nation, killed 50 of our citizens in Orlando because of their convictions, their beliefs in radical Islam, which, by the way, my opponent and the liberal establishment won't even use that word. And unless we do something about it, there will be more attacks. Mrs. Clinton says that she wants to defeat ISIS, but it was her and President Obama's fault with the way they pulled out of Iraq that ISIS exists in the first place. And believe me when I tell you that she will do nothing to fix the problem. I know it, they know it, the American military knows it. That's precisely why I've gotten the support of 88 generals and admirals while they call Mrs. Clinton a security risk. Let me tell you, I have a plan to destroy ISIS. We will attack their cities, we will defeat them overseas, and stop them from radicalizing American citizens. We will make sure that American families can raise their children in peace, not having to worry about attacks on our soil. We will make America safe again. Thank you. There has been many lawsuits against Trump University, and many have claimed it to be a scam. How can you explain this? situation and I keep hearing false information all over the place absolutely false my attorneys have proven throughout the litigation that Trump University students received a valuable education and the program that has received overwhelmingly positive reviews check out my website 98% support.com for those who decided they weren't satisfied with my program you could have your money back within three days or in a multi-day program within the end of that. Now, I believe that if it had just been a case against me as a businessman, and it was a neutral environment, this matter would have already been resolved. But because of the special circumstances with me running for president as the Republican nominee, it has been blown out of proportion by the media, and many have concerns as to whether I will receive a fair trial. Now, as for now, I believe that Hillary's numerous crimes, some of which have led to the death of Americans in Benghazi, situations like that, far outweigh a simple customer satisfaction issue. Let's get back to the issues, people. Of recent FBI investigations, why should we trust that you would be any more honest or dependable as president of our country? Media outlets will stretch the truth about the entire situation. Even Donald seems to be misinformed. I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, which was allowed by the State Department, Wrong. because I thought it would be easier to carry one device to my work and for two personal emails instead. Looking back on it, it would have been better if I simply used a second email account and carried a second phone, but at the time, it didn't seem like an issue. The laws and regulations in effect when I was Secretary of State allowed me to use my email for work. That is an undisputed fact. Again, looking back, I regret my decisions, but at the end of the day, I'm just a grandmother with two eyes and a brain. If that's what our country has best to offer, so be it. Secretary Clinton, how do you explain your husband and you gaining hundreds of millions of dollars in wealth over a short period of time when you didn't create any products or company to generate such eye-popping revenue? It appears the only thing you had to sell was influence. Is this true? 
assume you're talking about the Clinton Foundation, which is, in the end, an implementer. We operate programs on the ground around the world that are making a difference on issues ranging from poverty to global help to climate change and women and girls' participation. Many large foundations actually provide grants to the Clinton Foundation so that our staff can implement the work. We cover a variety of Clinton Development Initiative staff in Africa to train rural farmers to help them get access to seeds, equipment, and markets for their crops. Clinton Climate Initiative helps government in African and the Caribbean regions with reforestation efforts and in the island nations to help develop renewable energy projects. Staff at the Clinton Health and Access Initiative, an independent affiliated ent an entity, works in dozens of nations to lower the costs of HIV and AIDS medicine, scaling up pediatric AIDS treatment, and promote treatment of diarrhea through life-saving zinc treatment. Mr. Trump, you call yourself an ardent philanthropist, but we have failed to find evidence of donations to every charity you claim to have given to. Is this true? categorically false. I have donated to many charities. You can check the records, you can verify that. I may not have donated as much to as many people as other billionaires, but believe me when I say that the money's there. I have donated tens of millions of dollars to my own foundation, going to veterans groups, New York charities, all over the place. My own son Eric, who I'm very proud of, has given over $28 million to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in California, a wonderful hospital. I have personally raised $15 million for charity from The Apprentice alone. Great show, by the way. Best show on television. Uh, now, if you bother to research it, you will see I absolutely have contributed generously to many charities, both in my own, ho own home state of New York and around the world. What I'm curious of is where the Clinton Foundation's money is going. What charities is she donating to? Mr. Trump, regarding immigration, where do you think is the line between human rights and citizen rights? rights. I believe that, I do. But that is not the same as citizen rights. Citizens' rights belong exclusively to American citizens. You live here, you work, you pay taxes. This entitles you to the benefits of our great society. Secretary Clinton would have illegal immigrants come over our border and reap the benefits owed to hardworking Americans. We don't know who these people are. They could be murderers, criminals, we don't know. They're unregistered. They don't pay taxes, and Mrs. Clinton would have us give them welfare, pay them with money earned legally by the American people, while they collect paychecks under the table for undocumented labor. I've said it before, you knew this was coming. We need to build a wall. A big, beautiful wall. It's gonna be huge. And upon that wall will be the great golden gate of legal immigration. I have nothing against immigrants. My wife is an immigrant herself. And I have nothing against the Mexican people, wonderful people. I believe in streamlining the immigration process and securing our borders so nobody gets in unless we know about it. Get in legally, get in here safely, and that is the defining line. Thank you. It's unrealistic to say we can completely shut down our borders while implementing a new you voted for the wall. Immigrated Reform Act. We need comprehensive immigration reform, and that starts within our country with a full path to citizenship. Congress won't act. I'll defend President Obama's executive actions. And I'll go even further to keep families together. I'll end family detention close private immigrant detention centers, and help more eligible people become naturalized. I am committed to introducing comprehensive immigration reform and a path to legitimate citizenship within the first 100 days of my presidency. If we support my plan for immigration reform and invest in infrastructure, we are going to have more than enough jobs for everyone. That is what we want in America, because I want everyone to have jobs with purpose and dignity. We should be deporting criminals, not hardworking immigrant families who are doing the very best they can. Secretary Clinton, if you are elected into office, what would be your plan to combat crime in this country? That begins with common sense reforms, like ending racial profiling, providing better training on de-escalation and implicit bias, and supporting municipalities that refer to investigation and prosecution of police-involved deaths by independent bodies. Everyone in America should respect the law and be respected by the law. We need to end mass incarceration, use strategies like police body cameras to improve accountability, 
increase substance abuse treatment, and aim resources at criminals who pose the greatest threat. And we need to invest and acknowledge education and job training, the foundation of success in this country, bringing law enforcement and communities together to develop national guidelines on use of force by police and officers would be better to enable to fight the real criminals. I will promote oversight and accountability in use of controlled equipment. We will finally be able to say loudly and clearly that for repeat violent criminal offenders, three strikes and you're out. We're tired of putting you back through the revolving door. Respond. Law and order. That is my plan. We must establish law and order. We must be tougher on violent crime to protect our people. The black community in particular is suffering from this right now. Crime rates are high and law-abiding black citizens are being subject to racial profiling. Racial tension is building, in no small part due to the actions of the media, Secretary Clinton, and the Black Lives Matter movement. I want to move for a stronger relationship between the police and the black community. We cannot have this infighting. Without that bond of trust, nothing can get done. And Secretary Clinton, of course, would only agitate the violence for her own gain. It was found recently in one of the leaked emails that she planned to use the tragic death of Eric Garner for her anti-gun propaganda. Never mind that he wasn't shot and guns weren't involved. We absolutely cannot trust a candidate who would incite rumors and further divide the police and the people to advance her own causes. We need a stronger unity of the police and the people, all people, if we are going to combat crime and keep the country safe. Now it's time for your closing statements. Each candidate has one minute to respond. Mr. Trump, you're first. I started this campaign with one goal. I want to make America great again. I want to fix the corrupt establishment that has been putting the needs of the American people second to its own goals. I believe that presidential candidate is not above the law and should be held accountable for her crimes. We must not surrender our hope, our vision for America, for a crooked politician who thinks she could get away with it. We need safety and we need justice. No longer can we let radical Islamic terrorists, can we allow them to put American lives in danger? No longer will we stand as a country divided by meaningless issues or played up racial tensions. We will secure the border and safeguard American industry. We will do more for minority communities than any Democrat has done in the last century. We will make America safe again and we will make America great again. That is my vision. Do you stand with her because she doesn't stand with you? Or do you stand with America's future? Thank you. to everyone watching today that I'm reaching out to all Americans, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, because we need everyone to make our country what it should be, to grow the economy, to make it fairer, to make it a work for everyone. We need your talents, your skills, your ambitions, your commitment, your energy. You know, I've been privileged to see the to see the presidency up close and I know the awesome responsibility of protecting our country and the incredible opportunity it is to try to make life better for all of you. I have made a cause for children and families really my life's work. That's what my mission will be in my presidency. I will stand up for families against powerful interests, against corporations. I will do everything I can to make sure we have good jobs and rising incomes and that kids have good educations from preschool through college. I hope you will give me a chance to be your president. Vote as if your future depends on it, because it does. This is no ordinary time. This is not an ordinary election. Thank you to the candidates. Thank you to our moderators, Anna Santini and Nick Obelbecker, and to our timekeeper, Matthew Ray. This ends today's presidential debate and the special presentation of Kennedy Live. We hope you enjoyed the candidates' debates. Don't forget to remain involved. Vote on Monday, and we'll tell you the results of the election on Tuesday, the real election day. Thank you, Kennedy Live. Now back to class.